Okay, great. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I know some of you have said, hey, and I super appreciate it. I can see a few of you on your webcam. Some of you are not, I'm not seeing. Um, let's see. I'm not seeing you. But, um, this is going to be super interactive. So just feel free to chime in whenever. And um, so we're going to go over today, Biology Semester 2, Unit 5 Review. Um, and just go through the questions and help you out with that. If you hear something on my end, it's because I have my, I have my 20 month old sitting on my lap right now, but he's just hanging out with me. So if you hear something, that's what it is. Okay. Never do it while I'm taking it serious. All right. We're going to get started. So what we're going to do today is uh, um, first 15 minutes, go over the unit five. Um, I just logged on and I can hear you. Um, I don't know which one it is. Is it Mayla? Okay. Anyway, we're going to keep going. And then I'm going to just take some questions and answers from you guys. And then, um, hey, Brittany. Um, I see you just logged on. We're just getting started. Um, and then we're going to do some study skills close reading and then questioning. Okay, so we're going to get started. Um, um, okay, so let's go over the first question. Are you guys ready? Okay, so it says there are many things. Oh, I have a chat. Let's see what someone's saying. Uh, okay. I can let's see here all right we're gonna get started so i see okay now i see some more people on here there are many variations in rabbit coloring light and dark within a desert population because hawks preyed upon the darker colored rabbits which rabbit was selected for in this environment? So, if it says that there are many, many things, but the hawks preyed on the darker ones, so which one is going to be best suited for this environment? Anybody know? The dark one. The dark. Um, okay, so the dark ones are the ones that are getting eaten. So the one that is selected would be the lighter colored because they're the ones not getting eaten. So that means they're selected for the environment because they do the environment. Does that make sense? That's not math, that's biology. Whatever I can do. That's science. Yeah, this is biology. You remember how we're doing? It gets harder. Okay, let's go on to the next one. All right. If there were no birds or other predators in London, what would happen to the distribution of light and dark peppered moths? So if there were no predators, what would happen to the amount of light and dark peppered moths? Would there be more darker moths? Would there be an even distribution of light and dark moths? Would there be more light moths? Does it not matter? What do you guys think? There'd be more darker. Um, so if there's no predators, so does anybody else have a different idea? <laughs> it would be even. I feel like I'm gonna strike back. I'm talking about mom's game. Okay, um, so, um, if there's a lot of background noise on going on here, so go ahead and mute your mic, except for when you want to talk, okay? Is that work for everyone? Yes. Okay, so go ahead and mute yourself, and then when you want to talk, you can um, chime in, okay? Okay, so if there's like equal distribution, there's going to be an equal um, distribution of light and dark moss. If there's no predators killing either of them, then there's going to be an equal amount of both. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. It says there are very many variations in rabbit coloring, light and dark within a desert population. Hawks preyed upon the darker colored rabbits. 
what will happen to the population of rabbits over time? Is there going to be more lighter colored rabbits? Is there going to be more dark colored rabbits? Are there going to be an even mix of dark and light rabbits or is color have no effect? Anybody have an idea or want to um, tell me what you're thinking? There would be more lighter colored rabbits. Right. And so why do you think that? Because the hawks are choosing the darker color rabbits. Yeah, absolutely. Very good job. So the hawks are preying on the darker ones. So if all the dark ones are eaten, there's going to be more light ones. Like, um, is it, what do you say you mean? Is it light? Sorry. How do you say your name? Juwan. Juwan. Okay, so Juwan is going to be more lighter colored. So yes. Okay, Brittany says she can really hear me. Um, Brittany, um, can you? Is it working now? Nope. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, that's working better now. Okay, let's go on to the next question. Artificial selection is made possible by organisms, the environment, humans, or Darwin. So first of all, what is the question? So that would be like, we wanted to uh, have uh, only pink rose bushes in my garden. I would make that happen. So I would not plant any red ones or white ones. I would only plant pink ones. So who is, who is doing this? Is it the organism? It the, the environment. So if I'm physically manipulating what's happening, it's not the environment. It's uh, human. I can tell. It, it, okay, I'm saying it's hard to hear because there's an I can't tell if your mic or someone else's feedback. You can click the mic on the participants list. Let's see here. Uh, on that one. Okay. How does this image show natural selection? First of all, right here on the very far side, we have two green and three brown beetles. And then we see this bird is like snacking on the green beetles. He's like really loving the green ones. And then we see, okay, in the next picture, we have three tan ones and one green one. And then over time, we have a lot more tan ones and not green ones. So what, uh, which ones are better suited for the environment? Like which ones are gonna survive and reproduce? The brown ones. The brown ones, the tan ones, right? The brown ones because they're not getting eaten by the bird. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Okay, great. All right, let's go on to the next one. If no one has any questions. All right, it says, what are the two requirements of natural selection? So what two things have to be in place in order for natural selection to be cool? So, cells and variation, variation and selection, variation and cells, and cells and variation. Is it? Is it a variation? Okay, Brittany, that's a good. Um, you got half right. So I hear a lot of beeping. Let's see. Um, off of somebody's computer, so I'm not really sure who that is. Um, but if you just got on, if you just got on, um, you want to mute your computer, your microphone until you want to answer. Yeah, Jen, I'm going to hop in for a sec. This is Rachel, guys. Um, if you don't know how to mute your mic, in the bottom left, there is a little microphone icon um, for your audio. You just have to click on it because that's why right now we're all having a hard time hearing the teacher because there's that feedback through somebody's mic and we don't know who's because everyone has theirs on right now. So we definitely want you using these mics and participating. Just think of it as like an on-off, like, you know, like a walkie-talkie how you have to let go to, to hear what another person's going to say. So when you want to talk, go ahead and just turn on your mic. You can say something and then you can hit mute again. So that way it can be the other person's turn without all that background noise. Thanks so much, Rachel. All right. So 
Um, the two requirements of natural selection, there has to be variation within the population and there has to be selection. So some sort of trait has to be advantageous. Um, and so variation and selection are the right answers. Does anybody have any questions on number six? Okay, we're gonna move on. All right, so number seven, it says in species, wait, I got a chat message, let's see. Okay, awesome. It does sound much better. I can't hear anyone, um, so that's perfect. But when you wanna answer a question, make sure you unmute yourself and talk. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, um, all right, so in species, there is no variations. Is that true or false? Does anybody wanna try and chime in? What'd you say? False. Absolutely. There is no be true. Oh. It's, it's false because if you just think about it like humans, do we all look the exact same? No. No, and we're all the same species. We're actually Homo sapiens is our scientific species name. So we all don't look the same. So there is lots of variation within, spe within species. Okay, all right, number eight, artificial selection only produces favorable results. So that means like when a human artificially selects a certain thing, like um, this is really popular in dogs. Okay, you know, we make all these new breeds of dogs and stuff. Um, so it says artificial selection only produces favorable results. What do you guys think? Is that true or false? False. True. Yes, false is correct. You are absolutely correct. Um, let's see, somebody chimed in, I think, on the chat. Let's see. Uh, true. Okay, so Vivica says true. So you would think that is true because if a human's artificially fixing it to the way they want, we would say, okay, yeah, it's only going to be favorable. But sometimes things don't go the way we think. So sometimes we do have unfavorable results. So the answer is false on that one. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. Whoop, my mouse is going crazy. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next question. All right, number nine. I don't even think I introduced myself because I got excited. I'm Jenna Harper, if you guys are, if anybody's just tuning in. Um, all right, here we go. Over time, individuals with helpful variations will reproduce unfavorable traits, survive and reproduce those helpful variations, die off, or become new species. If anybody thinks they know the answer and would like to chime in, you can, and you can try and explain it, or if we don't, I will go ahead and explain it after. So anybody wanna tell me what you think it is? Survive and reproduce. Uh, right, survive and reproduce those helpful variations, absolutely. So if you think about this like in the wild, so let's say somebody, like let's say we're talking about like lions, okay? So a lion that's faster is obviously gonna catch what it's trying to eat better than a lion that's slower, right? So that lion's gonna have babies and the fat, like so they could be fast as well and then they'll have babies and so that trait of being super fast is going to survive better than those lions that are slower. They're not gonna get to eat, and so they're gonna die off, and so they're not gonna um, continue that trait. So the ones that have helpful variations are always going to survive and reproduce because they're gonna be best suited for their environment. Does anybody have any questions about that one? Okay. Nope. I got a chat, let's see. Nope, okay, no question on that one. Um, if you guys ever, when I'm going through these, if you think it's a different one and you want me to explain why that one of these is incorrect, that's always helpful in understanding too. So let me know, okay? All right, so number 10, I kind of already gave this away because I mentioned this earlier if you were listening. It says dogs are an example of organisms, evolution, Artificial selection or mutation? Artificial selection. Absolutely, great job. Because we as humans artificially select, I don't know, do any of you guys have any like cool dogs that are like multiple breeds? I do. What do you have? A pit bull mix with cane corsa. 
Okay, yeah, so those are, humans have over time artificially selected these different breeds and then um, they have all these different kinds. Like my neighbor has a Bernese mountain dog slash poodle, so it's a Bernie poodle. I'm like, oh my goodness, there's so many different things that humans have done to make all these different types of um, dogs. So it's pretty cool. All right, you guys ready for the next one? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so what is a population? This one can get confusing for people because it's hard to understand what is a population, a species, a community ecosystem. So is a population the number of people, all the members of a species living in a particular area at a particular time? all the species on earth or all the organisms in an area so what is the population does anybody know the answer to this one all members of a sp species living in a particular area yes that is excellent who answered that question ethel ethel very good job yeah. okay Thanks. Uh, that is absolutely correct so a population is all the members of a specific species. So I could say all the deer in um, this specific area, but I couldn't say all the deer and rabbits in that specific area. That's not a population. That would be a community. Does that make sense? Okay. So all of a specific species. So I could say all of the rabbits in this area or all of the deer in this area or all of the rattlesnakes in that area but it's in a particular area at a particular time, okay? All right, let's go on to the next question. Name two examples of artificial selection. So dogs, produce, cows, or all of the above. Does anybody have an answer for that one? All of the above. Yes, does anybody wanna, does anybody know how produce could be artificial selection? Because we grow it. Yes, we do. Who here likes to eat watermelon? Me. Okay, so I'm not a fan of watermelon. I think it tastes like dirty water, but everybody else loves it in my family. So I, but okay, so we have watermelon that has the black seeds, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have watermelon that has like no seeds or they're like the little tiny white ones, right? So how did we do this? Well, humans over time have selected to make Watermelons didn't just come with no seeds. Um, so we have artificially selected our watermelon to be that way. They have grown it and they, it's like a very um, cool process of how they actually, you know, artificially select this, but they have, humans have done this. And then we talked about dogs and cows as well. There's all different kinds of cows. Um, and so we've done that. All right, number 13. Darwin voyaged on the HMS Beagle. Is that true or is that false? True. True, absolutely. That is what he voyaged on when he went to the Galapagos Islands and he went and witnessed all the different birds with their different beak sizes. And he thought, okay, why do all these birds have different beaks? And it's because they are eating different things. So they adapted over time to um, have that. Okay. Next question. We're almost done. These are the last two questions. And then we're going to take question and answers on anything you guys have questions on. All right, it says lizards have different sized leg bones. Longer bones allow the lizards to climb up during flooding to avoid predators. What is the variation? Is it the pores on their skin, the webbed feet, the skin color, or the different sized leg bones? Different sized leg bones. Right, because what are the leg bones allowing them to do? Climb up. Climb up. So they are avoiding predators by doing it. So, um, absolutely, the different size leg bones allow them to not get eaten. Okay. And then, does anybody have a question about 14 before I move on to 15? Okay. I'm going to go back to 14 when we talk about close reading skills because I think that sometimes we get tripped up on questions like 14, but I'm gonna go back to that in a different part of the session. All right, number 15. Species produce more offspring than will survive to increase the chance that the best suited will survive and pass on those favorable traits. Is that true or false? True. True. 
Okay, species produce more offspring than will survive to increase the chance that the best student will survive and pass on those favorable traits. So that's hard to think about like in human um, aspects because we don't just have like a bunch of kids and thinking that some of them are gonna die off and the strong will survive, right? So if you think about in the wild though, um, a lot of their young get eaten. If you think about sea turtles, that's a good example. You know, actually survive and get to the ocean not very many so they have a ton of turtles so that because they know a lot of them aren't gonna survive so that's why they have so many litter like so many in like does that make sense yes okay all right so we wait um, let me go back I'm gonna go back to the first um, slide now we're on the question and answer part. Um, this is for any questions you have on any of the assignments in biology on any of this. So if you, I will take questions via the chat or on your mic. So um, let me first ask, um, does anybody have a question on this assignment in particular? And then we'll move on to other questions. I'm gonna wait and see if anybody chats me because some people have been doing that. Okay, oh, here comes a chat. Okay, Nayla says no. Okay, so we have no questions over this assignment. Um, what about any other questions in your course? Anybody having any um, problems on any assignments that you would like to have answered right now? Not yet for me. Not yet for you? Okay, what about anybody else? Not yet for me either. No, is it pretty, you guys are doing pretty good in this class? Is it pretty good, easy for you or? I think it is. Okay, great. Um, so there's no questions at all. What if I ask you guys a question? Will you guys answer it maybe? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so um, I guess my question is to you. Um, the difference, are you seeing what natural selection really is? Um. I'm still in uh, semester one, so I don't know. Oh, if okay. So you're in semester Can one. I hear the question? I'm in semester one too, so I, that's why I haven't. I guess I haven't got to this point yet. Okay. So this will help you when you guys get to semester. Two. This is unit five review in semester two, but I'm so glad that you guys did because it's going to help you when you get to semester two. Do I have anybody that is in semester two currently? No. So you guys are all semester one. That may be why you guys are looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. You guys just pocket this in your back pocket for when you get to semester two. This will be good. Okay. So now I want to talk about some close reading skills, which is a um, really important thing. So I want to go back to a question about teamwork. Because I think that it is important to look at the question and dive into it and make sure we're answering the best answers. So close reading skills. So when I read this, it says lizards have different sized leg bones. Longer bones allow the lizards to climb up during flooding to avoid predators. What is the variation? Now, if I were to go and look at all the answer choices here, I see pores on skin. Do lizards have pores on their skin? Does anybody know? Uh, yes. I'll tell you. Yes. Yes. Don't they have scales? Uh, yeah, they have scales. So do they have web feet? Um, no. Yes. 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 Do they yes. have uh, different skin colors? Yes. Yes. And do they have different size leg bones in this variation? Yes. Yes. So all of these four are yes. So do you see how important it is to actually close read the question and see what they're talking about? I teach in a, um, full time in a, in a 
and my students, I feel like when they get a book like this, they always see, oh yeah, they have web feet. That sounds like a good answer, right? But you have to actually read the question and see, okay, we're talking about the long bones allowing the lizards to climb up. So what is the variation here? We know it is the long leg bone. It's not all those things, although all of these things do help them, but we are looking at, um, oh, we have a reminder. Can everyone check their mics again? We're getting a little foggy. Um, so go ahead and mute yourself unless you want to chime in. Thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. Whenever um, we put that on there, you guys are quick to get yourselves muted. So thanks so much for that. Okay, I'm gonna look at another question. Whoop, go back. Um, that is a close reading question. Um, so when you're reading a question and it says, it like in number seven, in species, there is no variations. Do you notice how I pause long on the no? Because sometimes when we go through this fast, we might read, in species, there is variations. And so you have to pay attention to when it says no in front of a word. Um, or like in science, a lot of times if you see like an A before, like biotic versus abiotic, I don't know if you've seen that yet. Um, if you're reading it too fast, you may just read it as biotic instead of abiotic, which they mean two different things. Does everybody know the difference between abiotic and biotic? Biotic is living, right? Correct. Okay. Abiotic is non-living. Absolutely. Excellent job. So putting that little A in front of a word completely changes the meaning. So when we're reading through questions and we're close reading, I tell my students you should always read the question three times. Okay? Three times through, even if you know it, because in science, Putting an A in front of a word completely changes the meaning. Um, a lot of the root words are the same. They just change the prefix or the suffix and it changes it. Um, okay, so like on this one, if we're reading this question, what are the two requirements for natural selection? So we got lucky on this question because every single question has two answer choices. But a lot of times questions will be given to you and it'll say, what are the two requirements? And so maybe you just, let's pretend the first answer choice just said variation. So you would think, oh yeah, variation is a requirement of natural selection. But it says, how many, what, how many requirements are we looking for? Two. Two. So we have to pay attention. That's a close reading skill. So if you read a question through one time and you think, oh, I know that, even if you think you're 100% positive that you know the answer, always, always, always go back and reread it again. All right. Um, what was the one we did at the beginning? This one. Okay. There are many variations in rabbit coloring, light and dark. Hawks preyed upon the darker colored rabbits. What will happen to the population of rabbits over time? So we have to think about, sometimes you see like, oh, darker colored rabbits. So you think, oh, we're gonna have more darker colored rabbits, right? Well, when you actually dive into the question, we see there are many variations in rabbit coloring. Hawks are preying on the darker colored rabbits. So if they're preying on the darker colored rabbits, we are going to have more lighter colored rabbits over time. But if we don't close read that question, we may end up thinking, oh, darker colored rabbits, that's what I saw. So we have to go through and read the question two to three times. All right, um, let's do this one because I had somebody um, make this simple mistake when we were um, going through this at the beginning. So it says there are many variations in rabbit coloring light and dark within a desert population. Hawks preyed upon the darker colored rabbits. Which rabbit was selected for this environment? And I had someone say the darker colored rabbits, right? 
Do you guys remember this at the very beginning? Yeah. Okay, so why is it the lighter colored rabbits? How do we know that it's the lighter colored rabbits? Right, so the dark ones are getting eaten. But if we just read this one time through, even myself, I might think, oh, it's the darker colored rabbits because that's what the one we were talking about, right? But when you actually read through and go back and reread and close read, which rabbit was selected for this environment? So if it's selected for the environment, that's the one that is going to survive and reproduce. So the selected one is actually the lighter colored rabbits, not the darker colored rabbits. Does that make sense to everyone? Are you understanding? Like in science, there's so many bigger words and literally, like I said, one letter can change the complete meaning of the word. So we have to really go through and read each question two to three times. We don't ever wanna just read through once and just answer because some of the time you may get it right because you just know it, but some of the times there's just one word you're missing. Okay, so does anybody have any questions on close reading skills that I can help you with? No. What about like, I know a lot of you guys are biology semester one. Are there any questions on any assignments in biology semester one that I can help you with? Yes. Okay, wait, I heard a yes from a lady. I don't know which one it is. Do you guys, do you want to go ahead? Okay, do you want to go ahead and ask the question? I would love to help you out. Okay, um, I've been in the process of um, doing all of my homework and everything, and I missed some assignments, and this morning it would not allow me to complete them. Okay, so you have been working on some assignments. Let me make sure I have this correct. And then did you submit those assignments already? For Yes, I submitted assignments, and um, the last ones were due on Sunday, and I attempted to complete them over the last night and it would not allow me to go back into the assignments okay so you're kind of locked out of those certain assignments that were due yesterday yes and i just got a call while i'm on here now from um the um advisor and um so she'll probably be able to help me uh when i give her a call back yeah i think that's probably the best bet your advisor to ask her or him because they have um, specifics on your like specific track that you're on. So I think when you get off of here, it's best to just contact them immediately and they should be able to help you with that one. Thank you. Okay, um, anybody else? I think I heard maybe Juwan, did you have a question? Oh, I was just saying that there's a lot of information. So, I mean, I'm just studying. Okay, Juwan, I'm having trouble hearing you currently. Um, do you want to go ahead and repeat that and see if I can hear you this time? Yeah, I was just saying that there's a lot of information and uh, I'm just trying the best I can to get the work done while I'm working. Oh, so you're doing your work while you're at work? That's kind of like a lot. I know. So I have a suggestion for you. Um, are you taking notes as you're going through the assignments? Yeah. Okay, so that's like super crucial. If you keep like notes every time you go through an, um, a lesson, you can keep notes and then you'll have all of that. And then by the time you get up to the final exam, you'll have all of the information and in notes. And I think, Rachel, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you can use one sheet of notes on your final exam. Rachel, am I right on that one? Yeah, sorry, I had my other headset muted. Yes, you can use one page, one side of handwritten notes on your final exam. So things like vocabulary, or as you're going through your unit quizzes and you're like, I 
get this question wrong every time, that's a good one to write down. So you don't want to write down, you know, full sentences or paragraphs and copy word for word everything. But some of the stuff that you know, like if it's in bold and it's vocabulary, it's probably important. That's a good clue. And then, you know, anything as you're going through the unit quizzes um, that you're just really like feeling shaky on, it might be good to have that on your, your notes. Okay. All right, great. Thanks so much, Rachel, for that. Okay. How many questions is on the final exam? Uh, okay, Brittany, did you say you had a question on the final exam? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what was your question? How many questions is on the final exam? And is it still the same score range, like the 60 to pass? Yeah, so it is a 60% to pass. <laughs> oh, my son just woke up. Just a second. Um, it is, you have to have a 60% to pass the final exam. But if you do not pass it, you can get a retry. And then you, um, if you get a retry, um, um, then you can um, do it again. And then if you do not pass it the second time, you can get an alternate assessment from the teacher and um, they will help you to get through the um, final. Now, as far as specific amount of questions, I don't know the specific number on, are you on biology semester one or semester two? One. Okay. Um, I don't know the specific amount of questions there are on that, Brittany, but I can go into the portal and look. And can I send you a private message after we get off of here? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll send you that private message um, soon as we get off of here. And um, when I go in and look at biology semester one, and I'll tell you exactly how many questions there are. Okay. All right, is there anybody else that has a question? I'll wait a few seconds to see if anyone sends in the chat. Some people feel more comfortable chatting, some people feel more comfortable talking, so. All right, guys, well, if that's all that we have, I just wanna say thank you so much for the participation. You guys are awesome. Sounds like you have a pretty good, oh, wait, we got a chat coming on. Let's see. Um, okay, Brittany says thanks. No, thank you guys. This was so great to um, actually get to talk to you guys and help you through this. So please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, like I said, I teach in a, in a classroom as well. So this is like my passion is making sure people understand and helping you out and putting a face to the name. I know sometimes you guys don't feel like you can um, you don't know who I am. So I hope this is helpful. And um, please reach out to me if you have any questions at all. I'm here to support you. And if not, you guys are doing a great job. Thanks so much for attending. And I will talk to you guys again soon. Thanks so much. Thanks.